Right, good morning. Um, to say that I've been thrown in at the deep end here is probably an understatement. As I explained to Gary when I found him last night, so I was coming down, I've got nothing prepared. Uh, no speeches, no slides, but thankfully I managed to find something to give a little talk to you about. So, my name is Lee Baker and I work for Mega. Um, we are probably the market leader on electrical test equipment, certainly when it comes to multifunction testers. Mega themselves have been going for over 100 years now. Um, and uh, throughout that time, we've had different testers coming up for different testing. So like Gary, you remember the 15th edition and 16th and 17th, and now we're into the, the 18th edition. So one of the questions that we get straight away is, oh, do I need to buy a new instrument for the 18th edition? And the answer to that question is quite simply, no, you don't need to buy a new meter. All the uh, mega MFTs meet the requirements, even the old ones. Now, looking around the room, I don't think there's anybody here that would remember the 1500 series or even the CM400 or the CM500. However, they are still out there. So if you're fortunate enough to work for a company that will only supply you a 1500 multifunction tester, first of all, happy days, because they are brilliant testers, but also they do fully comply to the 18th edition. So what I want to talk to you about is our brand spanking new MFT1741. All the multifunction testers are designed and built within the UK. Uh, built in Dover and hopefully one day you may even get a chance to get down and see it being built. The new 1741 it has some very good key features. It's a faster three-wire non-trip loop impedance testing. It's 50% faster on circuits, on quiet circuits. So if you have no noise or anything in the background uh, and noise can be created by pretty much anything. I mean, you could be working in a building and two doors down there's a gentleman using a MIG welder and that can affect your results. So if it's on a quiet circuit, it's 50% faster. Basically, eight seconds to do a loop test. Now, for those of you who have not been out there doing any testing yet, if you're doing a loop test in eight seconds, it's brilliant because time is money. So you're saving yourself money all the time. It has what we call a new confidence meter built into it. That's market leading, it's noise beating, it's measure, measurement repeatability. Okay, that gives you a visualization of noise in the circuit. So you can actually see how much noise is in there. So you can monitor it as you're testing it. RCD uplift immunity. Uh, there's no RCD or RCBO uplift. So when you're doing the loop test, it doesn't see any uplift within those products. It has the ability to test a 10 milliamp protected circuits. That's an industry first. There is no other tester on the market. Okay, all of that, there's no MFT that does that. We've patented the lot. So, reduced test times, four seconds to obtain the first measured value up to completion in eight seconds. So what that means is, is that inevitably you're going to be testing on a circuit that will be noisy. Now, the current testers that are on the market don't give you anything on the screen. They give you three dashes. And you have to wait until that test is completed before you can get a result. What this tester does is within four seconds, it gives you a display. So you can determine whether or not you want to accept that result before the test is finished. There are testers on the market that you have to wait until completion and then they come up with an error. So you don't even get a result. With this, you get a result on the screen within four seconds that you can work to. On the quieter circuits, it is very, very quick. On the noisy circuits, that's where your confidence meter comes into it. You've always got that bit there. Oh, that don't work. Auto start on circuit contact. What that basically means is the moment you put the leads onto it, it starts a test. So you don't have to try and press buttons, hold leads, just put them on and it does the test. 
Improved measurement repeatability. The confidence arc, which is there, that's what I was talking about, the confidence meter. That gives you confidence in the result you're getting, hence why it's called a confidence meter. So by looking at that, the result that you're getting there, you can tell just how much noise is within the circuit, so whether or not you want to accept that result, or try and investigate as to where the noise is coming from, what is creating it, and maybe even test it at a later date when that noise is not happening. It might be just a building site next door that's creating it. So once that's all finished, that noise disappears. So, this is how it works. Initial measurement, four seconds. Analyzes the circuit for noise. If there's no noise detected, the final result was in eight seconds. It is very, very quick. If you've got a noisy circuit, same thing again, measurement within four seconds, analyzes the circuit for noise. If there's noise detected, the adjustment is made to the measurement, and then you get your final result at the end. Now that is only for noisy circuits when doing loop impedance. Reduce test times in normal circuit conditions. That's the benefit of having it. Graphical representation of measurement quality using that arc. Visibility of circuit noise and measurements into, look, you can read that, all right? 10 milliamp RCDs and RCBOs, it has the, the ability to test through those. What that basically means for you guys is testing is quicker, means you make more money, you're in and out of doing the job a lot, lot quicker. Most importantly, what you've got with the new MFT is you've got safety. With any mega instrument that you buy, it's all about safety. Okay, RCD impedance uplift, the issue, if you've got an RCD and RC, RCBO, it can increase, increase your loop impedance values during the testing. So you can add over 0.5 ohms to a non-trip loop impedance value, and that is a common thing in these products. High loop impedance values recorded on documentation, well you don't want that. Measured impedance is not just the cable and joining impedance. Results do not reflect the R1, R2 values from the continuity testing. And additional resistance can lift the loop values to over the allowed, the allowed limit. And that's just because you've got a bit of uplift in that. So it's not really a problem with the circuit. It's the fact that you've got that uplift. That new tester doesn't read it. Paint and pending combination of test currents in the live and neutral and the live and earth. Okay? They ignore the RCD impedance completely. Consequently, the displayed value is only the basic circuit impedance. So what you're testing is the result you're getting, not all the little bits inside it as well. The MFT1741, it is the perfect tool for your jobs. Inspection testing. Three types of measurement are typically available, listed in order of preference. So two-wire high current test, your three-wire non-trip test, and your two-wire non-trip test. So your two-wire high current test, all right? If you do that, you're gonna trip out the RCD if there's one in the circuit. So typically, your two-wire high current test is only done on a circuit without your RCD or RCBO protection. Three-wire. If you've got RCDs and RCBOs in it, then basically you would do your three-wire low current test. So that shouldn't chip out your RCD. Your two-wire non-trip, well, that is sort of ideal for testing at light switches. So you don't need to get up to the light fitting. That's extra safety for the environment where you're working. If you're working in an office, last thing you want to be doing is standing on a ladder over people's heads at desks, getting them to move. Use your two-wire at the light switch. The RCD uplift is a phenomenon frequently encountered when performing a two or three wire non-trip test. During the test, the RCD internal impedance may sometimes be measured, increasing the overall circuit impedance. Okay, so it's just like I said before, it can increase the results, it can actually turn a pass into a fail, just by having that on it. So the RCD uplift immunity benefits, complete immunity to the effects, no need to bridge out or short circuit the RCDs and RCBOs, which I don't think anybody anywhere does anymore. 
No need to measure RCD input and output impedance. There's no need for post measurements and calculations. So you don't need to adjust any measured values. And there's no need to add any comments on the schedule of test documentation. And this is something at the bottom there that I thought I'd put on for Gary. Stand up and take a bow, sir. What does that say at the bottom there? No need to continually null out lead resistance. Oh, thank you. Yes. I don't know if you knew that, Gary. Uh, probably not. So I'm sure <laughs> Nobody picked me up, though. That's Nobody true. picked him up. So every time we get our leads, we haven't quite got to test them with everybody. We have to zero out the resistance <coughs> of those leads, don't we, Lee? We do indeed. Sure but not with the multifunction tester from Mega. All the multi multifunction testers from Mega, once you've zeroed out the leads, you don't need to do them again, unless you're putting new leads in. However, yeah. The same leads for the instrument return to the stores with the instrument that they were To be fair to him, it took him an hour to come up with that excuse, but uh, basically what he's saying is when you guys use the testers, you don't bring the tester back with the same leads it went out with. So by zeroing them out in this application now is an ideal situation. But if you're out on site and you've got your leads and they've been zeroed out, you don't need to do it again. Even if you turn the meter off, even if you take the leads out and put the plug in, which internally is already zeroed out, put the leads back in, you don't need to zero them out. However, this is not us that's saying this, that's the microphone, it's almost an industry standard from what contractors tell us when we do events is depending on the amount of testing that you do you want to be looking at changing your leads between 8 to 12 months regardless of the condition change the leads over get yourself a new set put them in always carry a spare set of leads with you because it's ideal um, the weakest part of any test instrument manufacturers instrument is the test leads and that's basically because the lead bit that goes in it's a spring and if you take that out and put it in and take it out and move it around in the meter it's going to start to get weak if it's weak and it's moving around it will affect your test results all right so if you start getting a few funny readings take the leads out put new leads in try it with that that's always one of the first things to do all right but you don't need to keep zeroing it out Put your new leads in, zero it out, job done. And that's it. Before we move on to any questions, this is the, the MFT. Um, the 1700 series is all the same. They all look pretty much like that. They all come with a strap. You can wear it around your neck. You have on here a test button on either side. Having this around your neck and you have the leads and you put up like that, it goes straight into the test, auto start on the test. So you don't have to worry about trying to press the test buttons there. All that testing on, which I'm not going to go into, but that's another safety feature. But guys, if you're spending money on a piece of equipment, that typically this one being the top of the range is round about £875 plus the VAP, you want something that's going to last. There's a little saying that's out there at the moment, buy cheap, buy twice. Okay, but it's all about safety as well. You don't want to be wearing this around your neck and have it blow up on you because you put it onto a live circuit or you get a transient come down the line. You want it to be safe. The other thing is as well, anybody here going to be working on a ladder? Yeah, a few nods, yeah. This is Jake's meter. They will not break. Is that my tester? They are, no, it's Jake's, you're all right. Oh, right okay, that's fine. They are good, solid testers. <laughs> there's not many, there's not any manufacturers out there that would come along and do that with one of their testers because they are solid testers. You get a three year warranty on the tester. You get a full 12 month calibration certificate included in the tester. You get your three wire lead set in the tester. You get the plug lead in the tester. Everything you need for testing is in that meter. But like I say, the important thing is safety to make sure you don't kill yourself. And secondly, you can do that. So there's no fear that if you stand there, oh, drop it. You ain't gonna panic because you're gonna break it. 
all right they're good solid testers that's it from me it was thrown together i apologize <laughs> hope that was all right any questions yes sir um yeah i mean this is this is something that uh, there's a lot of questions thrown back and forward about calibrating. Um, do you need to have it calibrated if you've got a check box and, and all this, there's all this for Basically, any test equipment, follow the manufacturer's instructions and that is have it calibrated every 12 months. For me, it's a no-brainer because if something happens and you end up in a court of law, one of the questions they're going to ask you is, do you have your meter calibrated? And if you say no, then you might as well just light that match because that fire's now started. So yeah, get it calibrated every 12 months. That's, even if you have a checkbox or a known socket that you use to do a, a weekly check on it, get it calibrated. There's lots of places now, wholesalers, that hold calibration days and they do them at reasonable prices. So you're not going to be paying a fortune. Yeah? Anything else? Yes, mate? How long will that last you? Years old? If I keep doing that, probably about six weeks. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, how long is a piece of string? Uh, if, you, if you remember the, the first meter, that one up there, that's the 1500. We started off on the 1501, went to the 1502. We then brought out the 52 and the 53. I still have people turn up with a 1501 that look in pristine condition. I don't even know if they actually use them, to be honest with you. But they are, well, they must be 12, 13, maybe 15 years old, something like that. So, yeah, it's how you look after the meter. That's what it's all about. It's how you look after the meter. Yeah? Anything else? <coughs> no? We sure? Going once? Going twice? Well, you're all going to have the opportunity to have a go at testing, I believe, <coughs> downstairs in the workshop. Um, I brought in a couple of little, uh, little things as a, as a prize draw. I don't know whether he's going to do something with it or he's just going to throw questions at you and get you to answer them. Or whether he's just going to keep them himself and sell them on eBay. I don't know. Um, but we'll have a look when we get downstairs uh, at the workshop. Um, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you.